In the previous lesson, we discussed reharmonization of standard harmony in hymns. And related to that is the area of modulations, that is, modulating from one key to another during the playing and singing of a hymn. And uh, this can occur uh, for a number of different reasons. You may have asked yourself, or maybe you haven't asked, why does an organist modulate or change keys between the stanzas of a hymn? Well, there are a couple of good reasons. Uh, a modulation is necessary and appropriate uh, whenever you have a change of attitude, a change of heart, or a change of view in the text of a hymn. Take a look at your hymns. A lot of those hymn texts are really finely crafted literary works where if you have, let's say, five stanzas that the uh, author is going to have one point of view, usually a distressed point of view, in the first three, and then at the point where you either get to next to the last stanza or before the last two stanzas, the mood changes and there is more conviction and uh, resolution and uh, for a better term, perhaps a little salvation and redemption that goes on with all of that. And when that happens, it's between those two changes, the change of that one group to the next, that a modulation passage can be helpful. Now, a modulation doesn't need to be too short or too long. It has to be appropriate, of course, but longer modulatory passages are actually uh, needed for practical purposes in many churches. If you have a procession, for example, and it's taking a little longer for everybody to get in their places at the processional hymn, you may want to have an interlude to extend that so that by the time the choir is in their place, we can then start the final stanza of the hymn. Uh, but that kind of an interlude can also be a, uh, worked through a modulation, that is a change of key. And it can be a very, uh, a very effective musical technique to apply to your playing. We have the most basic of modulation, it's called the pivot modulation. Let's say in this hymn, Ferris Lord Jesus, at the very end, So as we see, we were in E major, we used the tonic keynote of E as the leading tone in the key of F. And by going from the tonic to a dominant of F, we arrived there. And it was very quick, and it might be considered a bit fast and abrupt. Well, now let's look at a more complex modulatory passage. This one is going to take the majority of the time it would take to sing a stanza of the hymn. We're using a familiar hymn, Loba den Herrn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, and it's in G major. We're going to get ourselves to A flat major, but let's take it apart and find out how we get there. First of all, we're going to use eight bars of an expanded chromatic progression. We're going to take a bass and soprano line, expand them, and create these harmonies. Here we go. Now over that I'm going to put the head motive, which is the first couple of bars of the hymn, and I'm going to play it repeatedly, but in different variations. The first time I'm going to be playing it is original. Then I'm going to modify the intervals to fit with the harmony at that point. And then again, but with an inverted direction so that it still has the feeling that it's an outgrowth. Then I'm going to play it again in an expanded way, again to fit the harmony of the hymn tune. Here's that head motive. Now, 
continuing, because we are really out in the desert by this point. We're really far away from where we need to be. We've got to get back home. And so what we're going to do is to take the, what we call the tail motive, the, the motive that's in the last phrase of the hymn, and use that in the key of F minor, progressing all the way through till we get to the tonic of A flat major. And then I bring back the head motive. And then we are at the new key. By the way, I prefer you end on the dominant because that will lead people to know, oh yes, that's the dominant. We're in the new key. Now it's time to sing again. So here we are, this is a model of a chromatic modulatory interlude that combines head motive, tail motive, and uh, harmonically binds it together in something that sounds as if it is a direct outgrowth of the original hymn tune. 